Based on the introduction, I'm going to retitle my talk about the, the why, the who, and the what of what we're doing in golden rice in the Philippines and Bangladesh, and a little bit beyond those two countries. Um, so you, you've seen these numbers, and I'm not going to stress the numbers, but I'm going to stress a huge uh, learning that occurred in the medical and nutrition community some time ago. Vitamin A deficiency is not visibly blindness but it's actually the child mortality, because the damage that leads to blindness, the tissue damage, also leads to impairment of the immune system. And this leads to where vitamin A deficiency shows up in child mortality. And that's, how, that's largely also how disability just like life years are calculated. And it really brings the severity of this situation home um, much more poignantly uh, than, than blindness. The, the numbers are large. I want to thank Harvest Plus for this recent um, compendium map uh, based on w largely WHO data showing that the countries we're working in, largely rice consuming countries, where the severity of, of uh, vitamin A deficiency is very high. So red equals bad in this particular one. In the countries we're working in or focusing on in, in, in this uh, new grant, um, the Philippines, 40% of children under six, between six and six months and five years, are estimated vitamin A deficient. Subclinical vitamin A deficiency affects 17.5% of pregnant women. In Bangladesh, a fifth of preschool children are estimated to be vitamin A deficient. Among pregnant women, about a quarter are affected by vitamin A deficiency. I'll come back to this again, but these are countries with heavy interventions of other approaches to try and deal with a problem that's been recognized at the national level by the policy makers, by the nutrition and health community in these countries. So we're not solving the problem. So how, how do we get into the situation of, vit of vitamin A deficiency or not? So the first, first defense is dietary diversity. So if we have a diverse diet and listen to what our mother told us and eat, eat different foods every day, we don't have the problem. But we have the access to this diverse diet. Many people do not. Maybe access is a code for poverty. It also could be access to the availability of foods year-round that have sufficient nutritional value. In the case of vitamin A deficiency, you can, you can take a, a, a severe in intervention, which is to supplement with vitamin A capsules. So you treat, treat the problem, if you can, twice a year. Some studies said you actually need to do it three times a year for children. But these supplements do work. They're widely used around the world. But if you remove the capsule intervention program, that person is vitamin A deficient again a few months later. So one of the, one of the excitements are what can we do by food-based approaches? And for many years, in many countries, we have for food fortification. Many will, will recognize adding iodine to salt, a hugely successful food-based intervention for micronutrient deficiency. And you saw the symptoms or the consequence of vitamin A deficiency. It's not the visible goiter. It's the cretinism and mental retardation in children and the impaired productivity that is a result of, of childhood deprivation of, of, of iodine. And in many countries, including the Philippines, Bangladesh, the US, here we had folate, iron, selenium, beta-carotene, vitamin A, different, different components into different processed foods. And we reach people who buy processed foods, who have access to processed foods, and understand maybe the value of the labels that's on those processed foods. Biofortification, in the program led by Howdy here under Harvest Plus, strives to actually fill the gaps where people grow their own food. They do not have access to, to fortified foods. The varieties are different to the ones that are processed. There are a number of factors that come in here. So it's a food-based approach that mi strives to minimize behavioral changes by adding increased nutritional value into the crops and foods that people can grow, grow themselves, access locally, access within their communities. And Golden Rice is such a biofortification uh, project. So the need. Vitamin A deficiency has not been solved. And there are segments of the vitamin A suffering populations that are not being reached routinely or effectively by the current approaches. So we, we strive, to, strive to use golden rice to fill those gaps. Um, and in, the, in, all, in all, almost all the micronutrient cases, women and children are the most vulnerable in, uh, in these situations. So Peter is giving you an introduction of golden rice, and you've seen lots of pictures of it along the way. It's, it's yellow because it contains beta-carotene, which is a pro-vitamin, it's a vegetable form of vitamin A. We as humans convert beta-carotene to vitamin A on an as-needed basis. 
You've seen the, number, the data from Robert Russell and his collaborators work. So the estimation is that a, a cup, about 150 grams of uncooked rice, could provide 50% of the RDA of an adult. Because ri golden rice is so widely consumed, um, this would be an en enormously important vehicle to reach a very, very large population of vitamin A deficient uh, people. And again, I want to stress, golden rice is, is intended to be used in combination, in concert, with those other worthy efforts that have uh, delivered um, at, least mo at least part of the solution in different countries. So what's the project? And the excitement, excitement is that uh, up until six months ago, if I was giving this talk, I'd be talking about the breeding, pro breeding people, about the agricultural system. Now we have a leading nutrition organization, and, and Adrian has talked about the, the, the huge importance of Helen Keller International, one of the world's leading health and, and nutrition NGOs, with a track record of success and commitment to solving basic human suffering, and not just blindness, but all forms and many aspects of micronutrient nutrition. They're involved in dietary diversity programs. They were involved in capsule distribution programs. They've been involved in lobbying for, for the regulations for fortification of, of, of foods. They've committed to golden rice to see if golden rice can fill the gaps that they, as a committed organization, have recognized uh, in, in their work in, in many countries. So, um, so the, the principal organizations, but these aren't all, are the International Rice Research Institute, Helen Keller International, the Philippine Rice Research Institute, and the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute. Locally, the projects will be led by the National Rice Institutes, the seed companies, the, and other organizations in the countries. We don't have a picture of anyone from HKI here, but I do want to explain who these three people are. So the gentleman with the darker shirt is Parminder Verk, and he's the head of the breeding project at Erie. And the work that uh, both Peter and Adrian alluded to, the backcrossing work, going from an American variety into the most preferred varieties for Bangladesh, for Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, India, and the Philippines, is led by, by Parminder. The gentleman in the middle is Alam Gir Hossein. He's at the Bangladesh Rice Research Institute in, 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 in north of Dhaka in Bangladesh, and he is the head of the project in, 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 in Bangladesh. Um, and then on, on the other side is Tony Alfonso from the uh, Philippine Rice Research Institute, and he is the head of the project at that institution. We all coordinate our efforts, and we work very, very closely together. So what is the project about? At this stage, our mission, our charge is to establish the safety of golden rice. Golden rice is not going to be released to farmers or consumers without satisfying internationally accredited uh, by safety criteria. We also need to show that golden rice, when consumed as part of the diet, does make a difference to vitamin A status. You've seen the numbers on bio bioavailability, bioconversion, incredibly exciting numbers. This has removed a huge veil of doubt from the project. Because you, you've probably seen historically, there have been horrible prognoses of how badly it would work. The, the rock solid data generated by Tufts and Baylor College of Medicine have shown that the bioavailability of golden rice is better than anyone had ever even dreamt of, I suspect. But also, we, we, prove, we need to prove it works. But also, we need to prove we can get it into the, into the to the people who need it. So we have to establish the seed distribution systems, the, the, the networks for, for delivery of the grain, the networks for, to communicate the value so people recognize and why they w we create the consumer demand for this product based on, on need and interest in, in, in a, a more healthful life. So in, the, in establishing the, the safety, um, we've done a lot of this work already. It was done very early in the project. None, none of the introduced genes express proteins that are allergens or, or toxins. And there's, a, there's a, an internationally uh, agreed set of tests that are going on to, to, to take on that. But a lot of the work for, for by safety is actually done on materials produced under real time, real life conditions in the countries. So we're entering an intense period of field testing now of advanced lines and, and varieties or fixed varieties. And data from this will be used to, to establish through data and the science-based regulatory systems the food, feed, and environmental safety of golden rice. And these three elements are required before golden rice will be released to farmers and consumers. The, the data is generated by, by the proponents, by Phil Rice, by Erie, by Beery, by other partners. We expect we'll be submitting them at the data at least uh, in, in uh, the Philippines by 2013 and uh, around 2015 in Bangladesh. 
Before we go on to the next phase, which is the nutritional assessment, we will not do this work until we have food feed safety approval for the product. This is just an example of a field test. This is at uh, Phil Rice. Um, this is the second phase of the line selection trials. The first one was, was completed at, uh, at Erie on Christmas Day. Yes, agriculture doesn't take a holiday sometimes. And this one is nearing, is about halfway through, and these lines will then choose, chose the, the, the sort of like the proto varieties that will then go into the extensive multi location testing and will be used to generate the data for the food feed and uh, environmental safety. So the question is, does daily consumption of golden rice improve the vitamin A status of adults? We know the bioconversion is there. What happens to vitamin A status? So again, this study will begin only after uh, biosafety, food safety is confirmed by, by the, in this case, the Philippine government. It'll be a double-blind prospective clinical bioefficacy trial. It'll be amongst vitamin A deficient adults in the Philippines. And it'll compare golden rice with white rice and a supplement program. So it's a, you compare the with, without, and the, and the new one. This, will, this work will be led by, the Helen, Keller, by Helen Keller International with, with close collaboration with the University of California, Davis, and local partners in the Philippines. How do, okay, so we've, our, our terms are prove it, prove it safe, get government certification that, that is considered safe. Valid, validate that consumption leads to change in vitamin A status. So then how do we get it out? So we have to divide, design a delivery program that's not just the seed, seed delivery, making sure the seed's available to farmers, make sure farmers understand the value of the product, but also the program to get it into the, the consciousness of the policymakers, to get into the delivery mechanisms to be incorporated into or demanded by consumers because of the, the improved health, health prospects for them. For farmers, we're targeting, as, as the other speakers mentioned, the dominant farmer-preferred varieties in every country as the first launch. Succeeding that will be new emerging germplasm. We need to keep the hook why farmers want to, be, want to grow this, because it meets their basic needs for profitability, for productivity, disease resistance, etc. Because of the donation of the technology by Peter and Ingo and the other technology providers, there will be no extra charge for the seeds to the farmers. So farmers will, will, have, will have exactly the same margins on golden rice as they would on any other productive seed. As part of the consumer acceptance and, and promotion campaign, we must make sure we understand all the variations in the product performance as a result of different cooking methods, many of which we've done, but we will repeat. We have to establish that the taste is not changed. We've done some of this work. It will be done again uh, throughout the project. Because these are the questions we know that, that people at the farmers and consumers we've talked to ask. So will it cost me any more? What does it taste like? How will it work? So building on the work that we're doing in, in Bangladesh and the Philippines, um, getting it out the door and getting it launched, that's, that's in the immediate horizon. But we must make sure this program is sustainable so that the product can continue to remain available for, to consumers to deliver on the promise. And not, not unimportantly, what we learn through the through, to, through the projects or the programs we develop in the Philippines and Bangladesh, we be very important to designing programs for other countries. And the Philippines and Bangladesh are very different, so we're going, we're going to get a range of experience uh, and expertise from working in those two countries, pretty much simultaneously. Now, before I finish, I want to go back to, to a quote that's in the, the press release released by Erie also at 11 o'clock Washington time last night that, that accompanied the, the Gates Foundation announcement. And it's from Al Summer. And I, I only got to meet Al for the first time a few weeks ago, and I did my elevator speech because I, you know, I really wanted to thank him. He's been an observer and a commentator on Golden Rice from 1999 and beyond, uh, from the very first days of the idea, the first prototypes. And for me, and for many of you in the room, you'll recognize the reason we understand vitamin A deficiency is not trivially blindness, and that's a terrible way to express it, I guess, but as child mortality is because of the work he did. So now to see the father of the, of the true cost of vitamin A deficiency being excited about the prospect and the prognosis and the immediacy and, and, and for golden rice is so exciting for many of us. And we're absolutely delighted that Al understands us better now. I'd like to thank the financial support for the project. Not, comes not only from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but long term from the Rockefeller Foundation and from the US Agency for International Development. 
with that, I thank you for your attention.